morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Toko back again with some Shogun 2 Fall to Suit Samurai Scramble for, for Scramble for the Far East Prussian campaign. In the last turn, we just um took I guess the province of Kawachi, I think. Um yes, it, we did. Uh, we're gonna assess try to assassinate the enemy geisha, which she's assassinated. Well, not assassinated, but like uh, wounded, which means she's taken off the field in the first um attempt. So that's wonderful. Our agent levels up. Um, Derek. Um, he levels up. He's a, one of the new agents that I recently acquired. Uh, yes, we have taken Kawashi, and now there's a massive British army sieging Setsu. So that's gonna be a problem. Um, well, not for me at least. But uh, I was hoping the British actually take Setsu so I could take Sex Setsu for myself. But anyway, um, the Odawara appears to have no army, but when I attack it, it suddenly appears with a massive army. Consisting of a lot of cavalry, a lot of artillery, holy, that's a lot of artillery, and some infantry left and right. There's only one general, so that's interesting. Usually when you see these massive armies, you have these massive uh, generals. And I also, also decided to quick save because I do not want to lose progress. <laughs> um, I'm going to attack the enemy port because, well, I do not want them to, spamming, to be spamming an army. And yes, yeah, stuff like that. Elsewhere in the north, the northern lines has declared war on this, so we're marching north. Um, my general, uh, Christian, is going to be moving north. He's once again also one of my other adopted um, generals, I guess you can call them, him that. And we're going to be moving on to Miyagi. Uh, for those that play regular Shogun 2, um, regular t Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai, you guys will realize that Miyagi is the home of the Date province. So that's, I'm oh, sorry, not the Date, um, um, the... Uh, I'm forgetting their name, the Sendai province, which is the, uh, the, predecess the predecessors of the Date, so that they're pretty interesting. In the north, you can see me, uh, you, you could have seen me building some cavalry, and yes, we're gonna build some cavalry. We're gonna take on Harmina, and because there is a British army right there, we are gonna um, siege it out, but we're not gonna attack, so that's interesting. Um, elsewhere, I'm just waiting for the enemy to attack. I'm seeing what armies I can deploy out of Kawachi, and appears that a lot of people are unhappy with me in Kawachi, so that's no surprise. Um, our agent needs to be training our troops, and I need to get at least one army in Kawachi. I need to recruit some cavalry because, once again, um, one of my armies in. Yeah, this army is out of cavalry. Um, and I also think I also need to send in one unit that has needs to be replenishing, and I'll send the rest of the armies onto the uh, near the near the pro province of Setsu. But anyway, I'm gonna have my uh, assassin scout. Um, I find a lo lot of Dutch um, units. Uh, the Netherlands are sending a lot of agents, but not any troops, of course. They they are obviously at war, war with the British. No surprise, right there. Um, they have a long hating rivalry. But then again, so you. So too can you argue with most of the British enemies. Um, with most of his history, Prussia had a good relationship. Um, I'm looking at what cavalry units I can uh, recruit. Obviously, lifeguards and Silesian cressiers are terrifying. Um, Guard Uhlans or Lancers and Brunswick uh, Black Hussars are terrifying. Um, all these elite units are extremely terrifying. But because um, Uhlans have a good car calv cavalry... Um, charge i'm gonna think i'm think i'm gonna be using ulans um i have Brand brandenburg dragoons which are basically guys mounted with guns um but i'm not gonna i'm not interested in using them although they do have pretty much the same stats i'm gonna go for the ulans or guard ulans in this case and be and the reason why is guard ulans have that massive charge bonus which is wonderful Therefore, I'm going to remove all the Hussars that I originally wanted to uh, recruit, and I'm going to replace them with Guard Ulans, or in this case, Guard Lancers. But um, for those who are interested, Ulans is a name for um, a type of Lancer, um, most predominantly used in in the Prussian, the Russian, and the Austrian armies. Interesting. Um, this is why I hate geishas because uh, they literally will enchant your troops. In this case. Um, they, my, my general did not get enchanted, and the reason how you will see if, um, the general is enchanted is if he nods his head and starts in this essentially, like, a drunk pose, like, it, you, you guys will see eventually, but, um, in this case, he is not enchanted, and, uh, Yodo decide to reinforce Odawara, and, yeah, the Nagoya 
decide to attack me out in a pitch battle. As you can see me on the battlefield, I'm just essentially um, building stakes, why not? This army is very much um, a newly raised army. Uh, it is currently led by my legitimate son, uh, Ralph. Um, this entire army is mostly made of marines as their front line. Marines are, one, once again, uh, way better versions of colonial line infantry. Uh, as a matter of fact, they are extremely better versions of colonial line infantry. In terms of stats, they're pretty high. But in terms of numbers, they are almost the same as Colonial Light Infantry in, in the case that they have 160, while other units have a whopping 200. So, only a difference of 40, but uh, a lot more stats, so it kind of pays off. But i rather have those bulky, a lot of units, guys. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just trying to see these Marines actually look pretty good with their blue. And once again, for those that are, have not realized by now, my favorite color is blue. So, yes. Um, we are obviously going to be planting stakes because most of the enemy is cavalry, and uh, I, essentially what enemy cavalry does is they charge at your stakes. So that is 100% no surprise right there. And I'm just going to wait for the enemy to come at me. As you can see all the way across the line, we are getting bombarded by enemy artillery, but hey, um, that is a problem. The enemy has a lot of artillery, most of which, most of them are not within range, or in in, in in my case, are not actually firing at me. The enemy has this massive army of cavalry, spear levy, and that's and then a lot of massive artillery in the back lines, in which I will later be dealing with them. But yes, a lot of infantry, um, four units of infantry, not a lot, but hey, um, it's what they got. And once again, for all enemy armies, Uh, the enemy cavalry is going to be charging at us, which we're just going to shoot them to pieces, which is one of the best things I will ever do. Some units, fortunately for me, have decided to, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll stop fighting and uh, yeah, they'll just be retreating. Um, most of the reason, the majority of the reason why is um, most of them have been shot not only in Point Blank but um, have been shot going through this wide valley and then they've been shot again once they reach stakes and then they've been shot at Point Blank so that's pretty devastating. There are some units that actually made it through so um, they're surprisingly healthy but uh, my men are just uh, gunning them down as soon as possible or trying to bayonet them. Um, once again, for those that are wondering, all we have to do to kill a horse is to bayonet the horse. Oh, sorry, all we need to do to kill the cavalry is to bayonet the horse, which is interesting. Elsewhere on the entire front, the enemy cavalry is just charging again, and uh, yeah, we get a slop, we get a sloppy um, volley off. But hey, the enemy the enemy charges the stakes, and then the second they go for the stakes, they have to face our guys, and eventually decide, nope, uh, it's enough, and they're running away. Once again, elsewhere on the front line, our men are holding, but eventually they will just succumb to their fate, which is, they lose. <laughs> uh, elsewhere on the battlefield, my cavalry is just charging the enemy guns, and because our cavalry is extremely fast, um, once again, colonial cavalry for those that are wondering, are, is a form of light cavalry deployed by most European armies. Um, obviously, some countries call it different, and yes. Uh, our colonial light cavalry is, our colonial cavalry, my bad, is going to be charging the enemy artillery. And uh, yes, um, we'll be wrapping things up very, very quickly uh, because most of the army is most of the enemy army is majorly made up of cavalry, which are e already getting gunned down as we speak. And artillery, we have already won the battlefield without much of a doubt. So yes, um, it is a glorious victory as my men ride off to catch more, catch some more artillery. Artillery. The battle was a decisive victory, we have only lost 161, we captured a gun, which is impressive. Um, I hope I will be using that at, at the Siege of Owari, Owari. Um, and yes, our agent uh, has stuff, 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 and a lot more stuff. Um, are we, do we want to focus on guns or artillery? Of course we want to focus on guns, because we don't have a lot of guns producing sights at all. So yes. Um, I can't assault Little Worry in this turn, but I'm not going to do it right now. And the reason is because I have other things to do. 
One of them is the war with the is the war with the British. Wow, talking for me is very hard today. What the heck? Um, besides the war with the British, I also have to do the war with the Northern Alliance, and we're moving on Mi Miyagi. So interesting. Elsewhere, our fleets are getting moved. Um, I'm having this fleet go to Miyagi Harbor and just like uh, essentially start uh, attacking the port, which doesn't allow my enemy to raise a navy, which is wonderful. Um, we built another railway in Ichigo, and that's once again wonderful. And we're just continuing to build railroads, so that's even better. And I think that railroad stops right there, so that's a shame. Uh, but elsewhere, um, I'm searching for another army that I am facing, preparing to face. But I'm just gonna wait for the British to attack Setsu, and then after the British attack Setsu, I'm just gonna uh, disorder the British at Setsu. The assassination failed against their geisha, and I'm a little bit scared because uh, if a geisha does her work, uh, my armies will be essentially useless, they cannot be moving, and that's why I'm sending a, another assassin to assassinate her, which we do. So yes. Also by the way, for those that are wondering, Setsu is a starting problem is a starting problems for the British Empire, so they definitely want their um, essentially capital back. While while that is being spoken, Harmina is still gonna be under siege. And yes, one of our I think one of our agents leveled up. Yes, that's wonderful. And yes, we're gonna be leveling Otto up. Otto is one of our one the other old agent that we have. Um I'm also trying to get uh, him for assassinating. Especially enemy agents. That is the most terrifying thing. Enemy agents. And yes. Anything else? No, not really. Um, not really anything else. Uh, the siege of Odawari is still occurring. But um, I'm trying to recruit some cavalry which is needed. Although the army that I have sieging Odawari has cavalry. But what I need the most is infantry. Which uh, we are trying to produce as soon as possible. I realize my navy in Old War cannot bombard the enemy um, castle, so that's a shame. But hey, uh, we have artillery piece. Looking elsewhere, we're just looking at the map again. Um, yeah, stuff, stuff, and stuff. All interesting. Uh, once again, the, the army in Nagita is still being raised. I'm getting more troops to Nagita because if the enemy attacks Nagita, we will be having a hard time. Also, if the enemy, the Northern Alliance, does attack them, uh, I want a decisive battle that we will 100% be sure to win. And now, a lot of talk, and we are finally going to assault Nagoya, I think. Um, you can see here, um, one of my artillery pieces fired, and that's that. That's that. And the reason why that happened is because um, only one of my artillery pieces fired is because the artillery is bugging out. For some reason, uh, this captured enemy artillery piece will not open fire, so that's weird. Elsewhere, my guys are just opening fire. Now they're reloading, of course, after firing so much. But it is a wonderful sight to see these blue uniforms. I kind of find how it is very interesting that every, every, every um, essentially, essentially these battalions will fire, fire in order. The first one will fire first at the very end, and then they'll just continue to fire. So yes, um. Um, the enemy is taking a beating, but um, once again, look at our guys wearing these fancy blue uniforms. They're not fancy, of course, um, they, but they are very good looking. Um, reminds me of the army of Wutenberg, which is actually an actual German state. And the army of Wutenberg, um, in 1878, wore the blue uniforms, instead of the ones that we see um, in the case... I think we've seen Wutenberg infantry a lot in our campaign, but um, historical Wutenberg infantry in 18 uh, uh, during the Franco-Prussian War, my bad, is um, is wearing blue. 
This, at, at least for the general staff and the guard regiments, because, um, yeah, um, Prussian blue made sense. Um, they look very interesting. Um, give them a look, search them up. And yes, um, yeah, our marines kind of look like, look like them, but with some other stuff. The most notable difference is the color of the pants, and the trousers to be exact, um, if we want to be, um, technical about this. The trousers for the Wutenberg Infantry of the Franco-Prussian War was black, while the trousers that we see on screen for the Marines is blue. But that is also a pretty good looking uniform. Blue trousers, blue tunics. And gray coats, I think. I do not know... I do not know what these guys wear for winter. Oh yes! Um, sorry to tell you guys. But during the winter, um, apparently in the game, uh, the new update is gonna bring, which is happening in November by the way, the new update in November is going to bring a lot of stuff. One of them is winter uniforms for everyone, uh, so that's wonderful. Winter uniforms for almost every major European faction. And the reason why um, they'll be bringing uniforms, I, the winter uniforms, is basically a grey coat. Um, yes. Um, I knew in the I know in the Napoleonic Wars, uh, essentially winter uniform and sum, summer uniform for some armies looked exactly the same. Uh, one example was the French; they wore a grey coat, but in um, yeah, but that was in parade style. Sorry, um, they wore a grey coat on campaign and during the winter, during the summer. Um, sometimes different during the summer and depending on the place. Um, for the French, at least. Um, most of their uniforms didn't change from summer to winter, especially if it was campaigning season. On parades is a little bit different, but most of the co most colorful regiments that you see are either of the Imperial Guard or another elite unit. But anyway, back to this battle. We were just looking at the entire enemy army being annihilated without firing a shot in return, so that's wonderful. Um, the angle we have here is kind of problematic. As you can see, most of the shots are just ricocheting off. So, um, despite these, um, essentially wooden barriers, plastic barriers, plastic and wood. Japanese castles during this point, um, are made of, uh, plastic, uh, the, 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 I'm forgetting the name, um, yeah, the roof looking part, the, the tiles, the, the, the tiles, uh, is made out of plastic mixed with, I think, wood. Um, outside is plastic, inside is wood, I think, I think, I uh, can't, can't be sure on that. Um, the bottom is made out of stone, as you can see the lower part is made out of stone. But, uh, everything above that is made or either made out of plastic or wood, and that is why, uh, most Japanese castles are acceptable, very acceptable to be burned in the inside. Um, for some reason the Japanese haven't, haven't, um, didn't decide to do stone castles, which the Europeans did, but then again, um, uh, the amount of labor needed required to make stone castles, stuff like stuff and that stuff, stuff like that, is pretty enormous. Um, obviously Japan didn't have the, as much resources as say the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, and yeah, major European nations, which can raise a lot of people. And and you have to remember, guys. Um, most Japanese factions during this time was not- Japan at this time was not a unified faction. I think I don't need to explain why. Um, uh, certainly during the Tokugawa Shogunate it was a different story, but yes, um, but yeah. So therefore every clan, every uh, faction leader, every warlord who decide to build a castle uh, requiring a, requires not only a lot of strength, but requires peasants to build, and obviously the reason why you do not want a lot of peasants uh, leaving away from their fields is the simply that uh, if you have your peasants have built build castles for like what a year, two years, three years, five years, then the problem is going to be that the peasants are not going to feed your armies, and if you can't feed your armies, other nations will just automatically invade you. So that is a problem. So that's why most Japanese castles are not that huge. Um. And then the other problem was during the times of peace, there was not um, there was not a need to build castles because obviously the reasons why you will build a castle is to defend yourselves. Um, however, uh, peacetime castles look pretty interesting. Um, I I myself haven't been to a castle. 
a uh, Japanese one at least. I've been to a castle, um, yeah, I've been to a castle in, um, from the other side of the world, <laughs> but yeah, that, that doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, as time is going on, the enemy army is just gonna route the- all the enemy units are gonna route, and all we have to do as of right now is to cliff the walls and essentially take out the cannons, which are still in the fortress. That is very funny. As you can see, I and my men are running to burn down this arrow tower, which is right here. Um, it looks very gorgeous, um, however, for some reason there was a glitch and my units kept running back, so I decided, you know what, uh, scrap that idea. Um, this tower, we can avoid it at all cost. Um, so I'm just gonna have my guys one burn down the other tower that we see in the this that is currently firing at us, which is that one. And um, we're gonna burn down this gate. So yes, this is gonna be very interesting. Although, once again, once again, guys, um, seizures are very time-consuming. Um, yeah, most most of the siege for those um. Most of the sieges in historical antiquity is mostly just waiting, and waiting, and then waiting, and then finally when you get to attack, it's pretty um, inconclusive. Sieges are very brutal, um, with, and what is even more brutal, brutal is after the siege is attacked and the defenses are overcome, and usually what happens in most European armies, um, most Roman armies, most Greek armies, and even some um, Japanese armies will do this. They will slaughter the entire population of the castle. So that is not a good sight. Um, obviously, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take the settlement and peacefully occupy. Although, it's every time I see a game that says peacefully occupy, I'm really thinking what would happen historically. And historically, what would happen is this entire settlement get either get... Um, the inhabitants are sold into slavery, something like that. But uh, let's think positive. I'm not going to be doing that. Um, not in my lifetime. And the reason is because I have no intention of it, having everyone hate me. And um, there's a good quote that I like to use, which is, Rule through love and, and um, prosperity and not through fear. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're going to be uh, taking out these cannons. This is just uh, basically a boring task. Um, this episode is going to be shorter, and the reason why is because after this episode, I have a very long episode for you guys. Um, it is, yeah, interesting. Well, not very long episode next time, but a uh, very long episode in terms of what happens during that episode. It's quite interesting. Uh, for those that don't know, I record my most of my uh, stuff ahead of time, and that means I know what the heck is going on, while you guys obviously don't. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you guys, I'm joking. Um, but yes, um, as, of, as of right now, we are just taking the enemy fortress, and now we've essentially just stormed through. Um, the enemy artillery is quite interesting in the sense that they're either glitching out, which is why they're, such, they're having such a hard time dying. And yes, uh, men, some of my men are already cheering, so that's wonderful. And yes, um, so yes, the next episode is going to be covering a lot of important material. So, uh, get ready, essentially. You can see in the top left corner, uh, we're gonna wait out the siege for five, 1 minute and 54 seconds, but we don't have to, because I'm just gonna cut it out. Um, we eventually take the settlement, um, taking only 100, 113 casualties, we're gonna obviously repair everything. And once again, I do not need cavalry, but my son has leveled up. And obviously, as you can see, my son looks like a new general. Um, on Clauschwitz, or chance of not being assassinated? I'm sorry Clauschwitz, I'll be taking the chance of not being assassinated. <laughs> um, elsewhere on the entire sector, um, I think I'll be auto-resolving this. I think. Yeah, I think I'll be auto-resolving this. I'm gonna quick save and I'm just gonna auto-resolve. Uh, once again, the reason why I'm auto-resolving is sometimes the game is better at me than at fighting sieges. We lost 704, the enemy lost the entire garrison, uh, but uh, theoretically it's 100% worth it because, remember guys, um, siege towers, oh sorry, uh, arc arrow towers are very painful. Hermina has been captured and to my horror there is a British army, a full stack army that is literally in, on the beaches. Literally, quite literally. Um, this, well, 
there's two armies, uh, there's three armies to be exact, well, there's like way more than three armies. But most of these armies are one stack, so I'm not going to be counting that. Um, I'm seeing that the British are not interested in taking Setsu, so I'm, I'm going to take Sanda. Uh, and yeah, I, I think I made a mistake right there, in which you guys will later see. So yeah, we're going to be taking Sanda, and uh, the British are now with, left with essentially two provinces. This massive British army is in the field, but um, we're going to do nothing about that. Hopefully, if it attacks me, we're going to be not screwed because we have this massive fortifications of Armina. And yes, we will be doing just fine. Despite everyone hating me, I'm going to accept them from the taxes, so that's interesting. Um, my northern army is just moving, is, is there, or going to be taking Miyagi. Um, elsewhere, the northern alliance is moving troops. The British is harassing me with my geishas, and this time you can actually see that my general, uh, Ralf, Rolf, is shaking his head, which means he's been enchanted, so that's terrible. The British take Setsu the second I cross into their territory, so that's interesting. Um, the Dutch are helping me with their, uh, with my war effort, so yeah, that's wonderful. You also have a massive navy compared to mine, but yes, um, so everything is going fine. And a lot of stuff, a lot of people are unhappy, but for some reason there's no revolt, so that's 100% fine. Um, my, my army is right there, and it's it's there, so don't have to worry about that. I can also be transporting a lot more armies to the battlefield, and Owari. And yes, for, for those that are interested, Owari is the is the province that uh, Oda, Oda Nobunaga, one of the great unifiers of Japan, was in. Um, I decided whether to attack the, um, the army stationed outside of Setsu. And I decided not to because they have two armies versus my one, and um, I cannot guarantee I'll win the battle. The enemy Geisha has been taken out, which is wonderful. I'm going to take out one of the enemy generals, well, actually no, not a general, but two units. One is volunteers, and the other is, um, support infantry. And I think we take them out without t losing a casualty, so that's wonderful. Actually, no, we lost one. <laughs> uh, one guy has been killed. But that is one hundred percent worth it because we are replenishing, and I do. And the British army in the field that has just crossed from their island, um, cannot. Um, yeah. Um, back north we are moving an army to Miyagi, and I do not know what the enemy has, so I'm gonna have my ship scout. We're also gonna attack the port, but we're gonna see if we can reach Miyagi and the port is attacked, but uh, Miyagi cannot be reached this turn. But I am not afraid of the enemy sallying out because my entire army uh, for Christian, who is leading the assault, is essentially lifeguards. So we will be doing a very good job if the enemy sallies out. Elsewhere, uh, this British army is, sitting, is essentially sitting right there, doing nothing. So we're just going to cut him some slack and we're just going to keep scanning. You, the Netherlands have been doing a lot to the British, um, taking provinces left and right more than I think they should. But hey, um, what can I do? They, I, I cannot afford to fight a war with the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. I also want a peace treaty, uh, sorry, not a peace treaty, a military alliance with the Netherlands, and they kind of rejected me, so that's a problem. Um, yeah. So, yes, problematic stuff left and right. I think the best way to get a uh, military alliance is when um, your borders are meeting, so that is wonderful. The British decide to attack me on the battlefield, oh, well actually not yet, but the British decide to come out. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.